Oh, Mark Neiman, the mighty cruiser inside the circle. Go ahead, give me some jams. Uh, let's see. Just kidding. I don't know. I don't know what you like. I don't even know what you like. Springsteen. This is on the wall, so I grabbed it. Springsteen. Springsteen. Anything? Hey, little girl, is your daddy home? And you do the things that I want to in me. You burn my desire. Oh, I'm on fire. <laughs> That's a great song. I like uh, Come On Up for the Rise in a little uh, bit. Listen to me right now. <laughs> Try the greatest intro in Ohio Cast podcast history. Because the show's under 10 episodes old. Um, well, I don't know. I just want to explain to you why we have the GoHioCast podcast. Um, you know, Barbarian's a partner. Barbarian's yep. a partner, right? You know, you know, you know, there may be some. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So Barbarian's a partner. And uh, what happened was we have athletes and coaches and other teams that are sponsored and or they have partnerships. They have... They have whatever it is, whatever they're, they're – Colin Moore is a, is a rudest guy, right? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think it's a tough ask for me to bring people on to something that is the Barbarian Hour. I don't think it's tough for those people. I think that it's so competitive. And yeah. um, uh, as you know, you work for Rudis. I did. It's very, it's very competitive. And uh, some people get uh, – territorial about the people they're paying money to. So I'm a media outlet, go high cast, as you can see, you know, you've, you've worked with me for close to a, over a decade now, I believe. It's gotta be close, man. <laughs> yeah. So I am a, you know, I'm a neutral Homer, Ohio guy. I'll be handing these out at Iron Man. If you see me, hit me up. I'll get you one. Um, got a Hold on. I got a brick of them right here. Here's a brick. It's a fresh Wheat. brick. Fresh brick. Hey, I don't meal. get those things out. So listen, you're gonna get some. I think you should. <laughs> oh, I don't give them out. I keep all. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll, you'll know you it's my car because those magnets are all over my car. Yeah, I got a fresh shipment of magnets today too. So uh, we're in. But uh, I think that bringing the Ohio Cast podcast. First off, I don't put. You know me. I'm not a big editor. <laughs> I don't edit edit much. So what we have is what we put on. And it's like, it's nice. We go to the audio, we go to uh, Spotify, uh, Anchor, I believe is what I'm using, and Spotify. Uh, this one hasn't go over to Apple yet for some reason. I'm having an okay. issue with the, it kicking over to Apple Podcast, but um, we'll get it there. But long and the short, these guys are great partners, but I don't want to put people like, you know, I, I used Colin Moore as an example. You know, if he but ever even, ones, yeah. if he would ever do the Go Ohio Cast podcast, that's great. He's a great guy, but. I don't want to put them in a position where someone who's their boss mm -hmm. effectively um, is like, Hey, why are you going on some other brands? Bod podcast. I'll Fair still enough. work with people. I'll have you on the go Ohio cast podcast and I'll have you on the barbarian hour. You know, when people yeah. are good with it and they don't have some, you know, some of these guys are working for companies. They're actually selling for companies. And for me to bring them on a podcast, I don't think it's fair to them. That, I think that puts them at a dis, or not at a disadvantage. It puts them in a weird position, like you said. Yeah. And I think, especially if an athlete is being paid by another company, I think it's, I think it'd be unfair for that athlete. I think it'd be unfortunate. I think it, I just don't think it'd be a good thing. If I'm no. the employer and they're the employee and they're going on there, or if they were the employer and I'm the employee, I think that's just a weird dynamic. So, uh, and that's it's funny you mentioned, um, that whole dynamic there, your eyes get open when you start working with these people and you really understand a little bit more about, hey, this is the the brand is bigger, obviously, than my needs or my desires. And I need to remember that. And I, I'm sure there's a tie in here to the portal or college football, but I digress. The name, image, likeness, obviously, like you're, you're alluding to is another thing. Mm -hmm. People transferring to get money. Right. They have yep. they have sponsors. And then I, I don't like the Here's my thing. The word sponsor. I don't like the word sponsor. OK, I like the word partner because a sponsor implies that I'm not 
getting any, the person's just giving me money and they're not yeah. getting anything. There's no R ROI on there, no return on their investment. So I don't, right. there are things where sponsors, uh, you know, when Ferdinand's soccer team needed their shirts sponsored and I did it, um, that's cool to have Ohio cast on the back of the team, on the back of the team shirt, Jersey. Um, but like, what is my, am I getting like some big return on that? No, I mean, I'm doing, yeah, I'm not. It, no, I'm not. Yeah. You're but, right. but, um, there's people that there has to be a return. There's, you got to give them exposure. You got to put them on eyeballs, fresh eyeballs. You got to take them into new markets. You got to be able to make it worth their time. And it's got to be worth Josh Sassy's time. It's got to be worth, uh, you know, Guy Seiko's time at defense. So, and, uh, oh yeah, it is fabulous. Uh, as you know, wintergreen but, baby. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm peppermint. I'm a peppermint guy. Um, um, that is just regular. That's just tea tree and eucalyptus, but it's original, right. but I enjoy it. But to the point of the business end of Ohio cast podcast, I'm like a neutral me news media outlet essentially yeah. for wrestling. So sure. it's like, it's a no brainer, but, I'm glad to have it. I'm glad to have you, uh, Mark Neiman, the Mighty Cruiser, longest intro in the history of the podcast, the uh, Mighty Cruiser. You own a media outlet called Inside the Circle here in Columbus, Ohio. We've been doing it for 11 years now, and it honestly started um, due to uh, a buddy of mine, uh, Sean. He, he and I shared a common uh, – uh, what, what did I say? Uh, um, acknowledgement that we felt that our local newspaper was diminishing in their coverage of our sport. So uh, we were thinking of ways to spark interest. And he said, he came with an idea and this was the first year he said, here's what I want to do. I said, talk to me because I, I'm a big vision guy. Like when I think about this stuff, I go well beyond what needs to happen. And he says, here's what I want to do. All 14 weight classes, put them on a whiteboard, put the names and tell the story tell all 14 stories of the district tournament. I said, I'm in. Had I known what it was going to take to get this done, I might have rethought, but I'm glad we did it. And we've been doing it for 11 years now. And this year will mark our 11th or 12th whiteboard prediction uh, for the district tournament. And I think the biggest thing is there's two, it's twofold. Number one, we do tell the story. Every, every kid gets named that makes the district tournament. And we work through and we tell the story of the entire season in that weight class. But we also sort of run a side campaign of prove us wrong. Hashtag prove us wrong. There will be nobody happier in the gym if you come up to us and say, hey, you had me pick sixth and I really got fourth. I'm a state qualifier. I'm not mad. I, in fact, I'm, I'm ecstatic for you. I love this. You are you have made the state tournament. You have done what uh, what is that? 14 times 16, whatever that is, 140. 54. I'm not really good at math. I'm an ELA teacher, but anywho, you've done what 154 kids can do. So here you are. You are a state qualifier now. And don't don't let us determine. And uh, we have a local high school that had Invictus on the back of their shirts. They had I'm the captain of my soul. And I just thought to myself, don't let two guys with a YouTube channel trying to promote the sport dictate where you finish on the day. That's not going to happen. So last year at 120, when my son was on the line and Sean saw something. In this kid who my son was going to have to wrestle, according to the bracket we were doing, he's like, hey, man, this is a bad matchup for you. And I'm letting you know I think this other kid's going to win. I'm just letting you know now. Before we even go to recording, I'm letting you know where I stand. I said, Sean, we've done this for 10 years now. And every time it's not been my kid. Am I supposed to change now because it's my kid? No, absolutely not. You tell me what you think is going to happen. I'm going to write it down. And then I'm going to turn the camera off and I'm going to tell my son, prove us wrong, son. Let's rock and roll. And guess what? He proved us wrong. Great job, boy. State qualifier. I sent my brother a text as the last thing I'll say about this. I sent my brother a text. My son was a state qualifier last year. I have right now when I just said that I had the same amount of glee and joy in my heart that I did when he qualified. It is a thing of beauty. I love, I love this it. sport. I, love, I know I love that you love it. Yeah. Uh, dude, you know, one of the greatest things I know we're going to get, this is Iron Man. We're here for the Iron Man. We're, uh, people yeah. stick or hopefully they stuck around long enough because we're going to get to the Iron Man. We're going to look at Willie's national rankings versus uh, Haddad's seating of it. Well, the Iron Man yeah. seating committee, but I believe it was Corey Haddad had a large part of it. He's our director of the tournament. Yeah. Uh, Great guy. I, I, I like some of the, uh, the seeds that are different mm -hmm. than national rankings. I'm okay with that. I like that. I think he got them right. I like them though. Um, 
and he said his phone didn't explode. He got one call, one call or one text from one coach. I said, yeah, that that's a positive sign, uh, Corey, that you're doing the siege right when only one person reached out to you. So that shout out to Corey Hidd, the the uh, director of the Iron Man, the the uh, brains behind the outfit, does a great job. But um, to your point, last year we did a preview show of the state tournament, yes. and uh, some guy uh, we we didn't pick someone, and the dude got like got mad, right? Which yeah. is yeah. and then um. I believe he finished where we said he would finish. And I, and then yeah. my thing was like, I have no ill will towards kids. We're both high school. None. Well, you're a middle school teacher, right? I'm a middle school teacher, high school wrestling coach. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a eighth, eighth through 12th grade teacher, right? Like I teach at a building, yeah. it's eight through 12 buildings, so high school, right? My yeah. thing is I have zero ill will towards kids. If I had ill will towards kids, the la- I would be going to like a correctional institute. I wouldn't be going to a, a public school every day and going to work. I would 100%. go somewhere where we're trying to reform kids or it's where bad kids go. I, I don't want to do that, right? Yeah. Um, I don't want to like put kids in handcuffs. I don't want to put them in a holding. So I don't want to do any of that. No. I want them to roam freely and learn how to become adults and young, young, young adults and young individuals with responsibility, work ethic. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, understand time management. Um, goal setting. Goal setting. You know, you, know, you yes. I mean, we can sit here and we could do that all night. But point is, like, I got no ill will towards kids. I have kids. You have kids as well. Yep. It's like we're in the business of helping kids. We're not here to beat kids down. But you and it's like, kids, don't, don't let some internet, like you're saying, like I, I was talking to Scotty Burnett today, and we just, he's one of my best friends. I introduced him to his wife. And, uh, it's really easy for me to give Scotty Burnett advice, but Scotty Burnett had six guys in the state finals last year, three state champs, um, the highest score point total ever in the history of the division one state tournament for a runner up mm-hmm. every other year, any other year, 98% of the other state tournaments, they win. Man, it's crazy how it works out like that. Right. But like, I'm sitting here and I'm like, dude, I'm an internet loudmouth. I'm like, you're a head coach who's laying it, it on the line, you, building right? a program. Yes. And and for people to let us get under their skin, I don't want that. That's never that's never the intent of anything I'm doing. I, this is for fun. Yeah. And it's for promotion. Hey, there um, you go. Right there. Promotion. I was going to say entertainment. Not really entertainment, but it's about promotion. And, you know, the other thing is, you know, as you're saying, we don't hate your kid. You know, uh, I think the biggest thing for me is even if we pick your kid to get third or fourth or fifth or whatever, and they do finish that, it's not that we wanted that. No. It's just that that's someone has to win. The, uh, it was our opinion. It, yeah, and and the other thing is the way the sport is set up, somebody has to win, somebody has to get second, somebody has to get third, somebody has to get fourth. Unless they get kicked out of the tournament and they remove them from the podium, then someone's going to be stepping on that scale. And our thing is, we're just trying to promote the sport and say where we think kids are going to finish. And I'll give you a couple examples as we go through these brackets. It's the idea that hey, listen. Someone's going to have to win three very tough matches over a two-day period, over a 24-hour period, in order to go quarterfinal, semifinal, final. Yeah. And, and I'm telling you right now, that is difficult to do. And if I've seen you wrestle, and I know for a fact you can't create offense, then I might not pick you. Not because I hate you. Not because you're bad. That's not it at all. I think this is a bad stylistic matchup. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I mean, there's some people that he, who they have seated low, and dude, it's it's this way every year. It's the freaking Iron Man. It's what's the, the what's Iron the Bob Prusy line? What's the Bob Prusy line? The, there's two. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Number one, and this <laughs> tournament is where state champions go to die. Yeah, not literally, but it's where no, they go to lose. No, no when, they go when to you, lose. Hey, when you're a state champion, you are pretty. You are very good. You are extremely good. But this is on another level. This, yes. this tournament, it's not, how, Iron Man. it's not did you win the state tournament, it's how many have you won, number one. Number two, it's can you grind it out for two solid days? And you know what? Not everybody can. Not everybody can. And you know what I'll be most surprised at? If you look at the kid, the number of kids who go one and two or even two and two, back in their home state, like they're the talk of the, the state. Like, yeah, they're the can, OW of the state tournament. 
Uh, preach on. And that's what my point is. When you think about a kid from, I mean, we have a number of kids from Colorado, a number of kids from um, uh, Nebraska or uh, um, Michigan or no, wherever they're no, from. No, no, no Michigan, but yes. Yes, no, I Michigan, get your point. I, I, I get your knew point. that. Yeah. Yeah. But, and so the yeah, point is, you look at these kids and Pennsylvania, think, Ohio, yes. New York now. 100%. They're going to go back to their home state and they're going to say, hey, how'd you do when you went to that tournament in Ohio? Ah, oh, man, it was tough. I went one and two or I went two and two. Shut up, man. What'd you place? No, really. I went two and two. And this is a testament to this tournament. This is a testament to what this tournament does. It's yeah. intense. Very difficult. Yeah. And um, one year, uh, the one dude from Blair Academy, he's a Tennessee kid. He's at Iowa now. Um, he did not place at the Ironman. But he won the prep nationals. Jeez. Dude's a freak. Uh, what's his name? Can't think of his name off the top of my head. Um, I, hold on. I, I don't even know who it is. Hold on. I'm going to tell you right now. But when and I'm gonna when, make I, when I look at it, when I look at it, I'm like, these guys are freaks. They are unbelievable. When I look at it, I'm like, this is unbelievable, man. The 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 level of wrestling is completely bonkers, insane, and they're out of their minds, right? Like, when I look at it, yeah, I'm just like, Chittam, Chittam, Cody Chittam. Cody Chittam, who committed to Minnesota. It just came to my mind. I didn't even look. I couldn't even find it on my phone. Cody yeah. Chittam, he was like the number one pound for pound at one point in some of Willie's rankings. Um, and he didn't wrestle as senior. He's from Tennessee. His dad's from Dundee, Michigan. But – um. Oh. They're Cody Chittum didn't place in the Iron Man, but he won, and it was his freshman year. But that's okay. But he buzz sawed everybody else. I want to say one beast of the East. <laughs> he plays with the Iron Man. That guy's really good. That guy's really good. Um hey, one bad it's it's not even about a bad day. It's not even about a bad match. It's not even about a bad period. It could come down to a bad moment. That's yeah. how tight this is. We're talking a bad moment. When you yeah. should have stepped left, you stepped right, boom. And then the other problem with the Iron Man is that the mats are real small. Yeah. They're wrestling some of the best, highest caliber, high level matches um in all of the world, in my opinion. World, I said Earth, that's right. <laughs> and and, and uh they're on a postage stamp. They're on tiny mats. I was explaining the culture of the Iron Man to somebody and you saw my tweet. I did. I want to read it ver word for word, if you will. Go ahead. Word, oh, word for word. Is. If you've got my tweet queued up, I do. What did I say about the Iron Man and what 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 the Iron Man means to me? Not a problem. The Walsh Iron Man will never be duplicated, and the culture and history of this tournament is second to none as far as high school wrestling in the United States of America is concerned. Zeb Miller. So when 100%. I say that, when I say that, when I talk about that, I believe that. What will happen is um, when Flow Wrestling gets mad about something, what it used to be when, like, Martin Floriani was running it, they would just start yeah. a competing event. They would start a competing yeah. event. That's like what Flow Nationals was a competing event event with NHSCS, yeah. right? Yeah. So, like, whenever he would get mad, he'd start a competing event. I don't think you can start a competing event I mean, listen, they changed the California rules. The reason the California teams aren't here anymore is because they're not allowed to wrestle in tournaments with prep teams. Uh, they're not allowed to be a I prep school. I believe wrong. that's what I, – I'm sure if someone who watched this will tell me I'm wrong or you're <laughs> an idiot or whatever. Yeah. Don't care, but I believe that is the basis for no more California teams. Gotcha. Even taking the California teams out of it, it's still the toughest tournament. It's 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 hands down. It's without question, right? And it is the culture of it. It's two gyms. There's not really any crowd control. Um, they've been doing it for since 94, I want to say. And it's just, it was this Bill Berger's vision of it, of what it should be. And they've executed it pretty incredibly. Yes. And it's never going to leave that venue. Um, it won't be the same if it leaves that venue. And you're going to have a lot of first-time Iron Man people who are going to show up, and they're going to be like, oh, whoa, this is the Walsh Iron Man? Because if yeah. you look at Tulsa Nationals, 
you look at OAC, you look at like just let's just those are two youth tournaments I just brought up. Right, right. Yep. The elementary or or grade school or junior high or Tulsa, which is just all youth. Yep. You look at the national middle school duels that I do with uh Dom D'Amelio, those tournaments are run better and in one single venue where there's no separate gyms, there's no yes. go-betweens. They're in one pl- I don't know about Tulsa. I believe Tulsa's in one arena though. Okay. But I know for a fact OAC, and I yeah. know for a fact I believe Tulsa's one gym too. But I know for a fact OAC, and I know for a fact obviously National Middle School Duels are in one venue. Yeah, huge venues. You can stand up at the head table. You can see all the mats. The Walsh Ironman is not like that. It is not like that. And I think that adds to it. By the way, it does add to it. It and does you add to it. You yeah. Capital, I think other than Shoegate, I mean, have we? Had there ever been a, an instance in which it was overly needed? Like coaches are going to be coaches, but for the most part, crowds, are, the crowd eating that popcorn, are like this is beautiful. I love what I see. Yeah. Everything laid out before me. It's just amazing. And, I, and, I, and, you know, you get close enough to the head table, which I've been, and, and there'll be people, they'll just be like, hey, let's keep an eye on this guy. Uh, let's just make sure everything's on the up and up here. Let's make sure everything. And and who's the who's the idiot who thinks, yeah, I'm going to go into a gym and do something stupid when a guy like Donnie Pritzloff is there, a guy like uh, Chris Bono is there, a guy yeah. like John Reeder's there. Who's going to be dumb enough to do something stupid in which one of those guys can grab you and throw you outside and think, oh, that was worth it? Like, no one's doing that. And the merits of the sport, man. Most of us are wrestlers anyway. No, you you toe the line when it comes to respect. And you respect the gym. You respect the sports. You respect the competitors. You respect it all because there's a – I'm not going to say it's a, uh, like a code amongst wrestlers, but maybe it is, and I just don't know. But it's just the idea, hey, listen, there's an element of self-respect respect for the sport, respect for the competitors, and you respect that. Otherwise, you've crossed the line and you're not – you are part of the problem. You're going to get bounced pretty quick. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to be there long. You're not going to be in the walls. And they, there are no nonsense there, too, as far as if the, the Cuyahoga Falls police got to take care of you. Sweet. Um, Are you ready to get into some preview? A hundred percent. Hey, b- before we even begin, I looked at these. And just to, just to get us rolling and maybe set the stage as we go – I looked through these and I thought to myself, obviously it's the Iron Man, so we're really splitting hairs at this point. When I looked at 126, I thought to myself, my goodness gracious. 120 is the one for me. And we all have them. But when I looked at 144, I about fell out of my chair. I thought to myself, there's no way this can be this deep. But guess what? It is this deep. And you're right, 120, I have a star next to. But I boxed. 126 and i i put a giant box around 144 i put two boxes around 144 yeah that's what i'm saying um, dang this is legit yeah it's wild it to look six. at like uh uh looking at some of the guys i got some of the past results are right now on my screen nice and, and and the one for me right now um obviously is uh Jeez, oh, Pete, where's the one I'm looking for? Is this 2021? Oh, that's 2019. They gave me 2019 <laughs> results. I don't know how I got – somehow it just gave me 2019 results. I don't I don't get did that have, one. But, did they have an Ironman 2020? No. Okay, just making no, sure. There was no Ironman 2020. There was Ironman 2021, though, which was okay. last year. So yep. um, let's get into it. Let's just get into it. Um, Yeah, they got their, their, their websites jacked up. The 113 link goes to 2019. Mm. One, the 120 link goes to uh, the 120 goes to tw- it goes to 2021. Yeah, their their okay. their sites jacked up. Their sites jacked up. Okay. Um, um, so we do. Yes. Um, Jesus, let's go here. Let's go a little bit. Let's get into it. All right. Uh, 106 pounds Walsh Jesuit Ironman. I'm looking at the pre seeds on Matt Scout. Shout out to Willie Sailor and Rockfin. Um, do you have the pre seeds up? Uh, I actually had, yes, I do. Sorry, yes, I do. So, what do you have? Yeah, I have Tyler DeCraker, Don Minaretto, yep. um, Aiden Smith, yep, Davis Mataika, and Javon Mon- Yarborough, uh, Leo Panzone, Jason Goodwin, yep. Goodwin, that's Aiden it. Thomas. Hey, 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 
Your team, first off, let's make this be known. Obviously, I think that Blair's the favorite. Who is your Who is your team? Who are you going with? Hey man, I, I cannot go through all 14 weights and not think to myself, oh, there's another Stillwater, Oklahoma kid. There's another Stillwater, Oklahoma kid. Oh, look at this. Another Stillwater, Oklahoma kid. What is going on? And they're all like top eight. It's like, man, if you can, if you can get obviously a couple champs like they had last year, if you can squeak out three champs, three thirds, maybe a runner up here or there, you're going to have eight guys, nine guys placing top six. Uh, that's pretty good. I've been doing math. I'm an ELA teacher, but I can do some adding and subtracting, and that's you start to add up points there. Yeah. So I mean, I'm with I, you. I, they're really good. They're tough. They're solid. Um, two champs returning. Both champs are returning. Um, in uh, Ferrari coming back at 57 or 65. What do they got them at this year? Uh, they have for Angelo Ferrari at 65. Yep. And then at 50, they have Ladarian Lockett. Lockett. Lockett won it last year as a freshman. So, I mean, and yeah. If I may, real quick, uh, Aiden Thomas is currently the eight seed. And obviously, this is before weigh ins and all the travel and everything. Uh, so, he's going to have to go to the one seed early. That, yeah. that could, I mean, that's, that, that's what makes me pay attention. Not that I wouldn't be paying attention to it anyway, but it's circled on my bracket because if he can overcome that, for, that number one seed, which, uh, the Quakers gonna be pretty good. That's gonna be a killer. Uh, the, is that quarterfinal match? One eight. I'm not. Eight, well, hold yeah. on. Aiden Thomas is gonna have to go through Emmerich McBurney the way the bar- bracket. First, that yes, up. it's right. And it, yeah, and, my, and those guys have both have a first round matchup as well, just to hit one yeah. another. And if there's ever a weight class that's, I'm not gonna say the most unpredictable, but leans lends itself to unpredictability, unpredictability. I'm an English teacher. I should know that. But um, it, it's the one of six. You don't have a lot of juniors and seniors that have, you know, shown you what they've done before. You have a lot of freshmen and sophomores that have never crossed paths before. Now it's all, man, you better know your stuff, which in this case, a lot of it's going to be, you know, hey, I've never seen this kid wrestle before. He's got four freshmen here. I've never seen them wrestle before. So can be gonna can get kind of tricky. Yeah, and then, and then it's, you throw in freshmen. guys. You throw in guys. There's a lot of guys in here. Ethan Tamar. Tamar is a West Shore guy. St. Edward, he's a 13 seed. Ryland Seacrest, the 11 seed out of Brexville. He's a load and massive for the weight. Obviously, I said Emrick McBurney. You know, I got to go with clearly the, the homerism in me. Um, uh, Javon Yarbrough. I, I like to go through the Ohio guys. You know that. And it's the yeah, tournament is Ohio heavy, obviously, because it's hosted in Ohio. And it's in Northeast yeah. Ohio. And everybody I just named, St. Edward, Brexville, Maslin, Perry, and Copley are all Northeast Ohio teams. Yep. They, so, they've, got, they've got a lockdown of the state tournament. I think every state champ has come from the Northeast Ohio in the introductory weight for, for all time. So, I mean, they've really done a pretty solid job raising up those guys. And I think Yarborough is a great example. They're, they're a lot of times they're two and three time introductory weight competitors. They're yeah. just small. And I, I don't know what he weighs yet. Like, has he broken 106 or even 110 yet? I, he might not have. But his wrestling speaks volumes to how good this kid is. Because a lot of uh, – I think the last two years he's been undersized. So, for him to be listed as the five seed here, I mean, that's pretty that's pretty doggone good. I will say this. Real quick question. Look at that 15 seed. For 15 seed, is that a relation to – Zertzis. Uh, Zertzis. Yes, I believe Zertzis. I believe that would be – I want to say that's Alex Zertz's son, but I don't know the answer to that. I'm going to have to find out. Oh, hey, maybe we'll, well, maybe we'll introduce, introduce, do an interview with uh, this weekend. Yeah, I want to find that out. That's something. Obviously, Willie would know that, right? Willie would know that. And yeah. um, do you have a winner? Is there someone you're going to go with for 106 pounds? Is there someone, do you want a final you want to pick? Uh, Blair, Blair Academy, I think, win, does win this. Tyler uh, DeCrisco? Um, I know I mentioned uh, Aiden Thomas. I, I do think Aiden Thomas is good, but he's going to have to, as you mentioned, he's going to have to go through McDur- Big Bernie first, and he's going to have to work his way through Dick Raker. So I, I think I think the Blair Academy kid is going to be your, your champ. The question is, who's he going to come out against? I can see Aiden Smith being there. So PA kid knows how to ride, knows how to turn probably. Probably going to end up in, in the finals there. And I'm, I'm going to go with Blair Academy. Okay. I'll go Dom Minoretto in the finals versus Javon Yarbrough. No. Nice. Wait, yeah. 
Woo! Can't wait to see it. I love your homerism. I was going to say when you mentioned your <laughs> hey, And then listen, you know who I'm going with in the finals? Yo, bro. No. Yo, bro. Yo, bro. Gotcha. Hey, wait till Central Ohio shows up in these brackets. It's going to be like, wait, you you have who? He's not even listening to the preseason. I, I okay. love it. I love that's it. My boy. I love it. So that's mine. I'll go with Yarbrough. I'll go with Yarbrough. He's, he's grown into the weight. Uh, he's a junior, a couple times state placer. He was a peanut as a freshman, placed last year. Junior, I like I like him. Um, 113, I'm going to tell you something right now. Look <laughs> the freak out. Look the freak out. Hey, I have a question. I was just looking at the national rankings. Keanu Dillard is the third ranked guy in the country. Keanu Dillard is not listed at 106. He's from Becca, which is Bethlehem Catholic. And then you'll oh, see Nathan that. Nathan Desmond is Becca. Hmm. Do you see my point? Nathan What's Desmond. Up? Nathan Desmond was a final. He lost to Jordan last year in sudden victory. At 106. Yeah. So, well, now but I'm just saying they're they're new. They're Keanu Dillard. They're uh, they're 106 now for Bethlehem Catholic. Yeah. It's not listed in the. He must not be coming. I guess the whole point. Well, mm, yeah. See what I'm saying? I, yeah, I do. And I thought there was someone else in here that I thought to myself, well, why is he listed? Are you telling me he's the 17th? Keanu Dillard. Keanu Dillard is the three third ranked guy in the country according to Willie Sailor Matt Scouts. He is not listed. DeCraker is five. So by, by the rankings. Now listen, yep. not all the national rankings align uh, align with the seats. Um, yep. because I believe seating committee, along with uh ultimately uh Haddad, I believe made the seating how they felt was most fair uh, according to their seating criteria. Formula, you get it. You know, and, and and your point is he's not 17, that's for certain. He's probably just not entered. No, no, the 106 pounder, Keanu Dillard, is the number – he's the third-ranked guy in the country. Yes. They do not have him in the pre -seeds. That's what I'm saying. He would and be your I, number one most likely. Right. And, and that's my point. Is You're not saying he's the 17 guy. You're saying he's he's going to be in the top three seeds, but because he's not listed, yeah. he's probably coming. Yeah, that's my yeah, point. I mean, they would list that guy if that guy was yeah. good to go. Nate Desmond's um, listed. Yeah, Nate Desmond – Barrick Jordan, they're your twos and your threes. That's a rematch of the final last year at 106. Yes. Esmond loses in overtime. Barrick Jordan gets a takedown. Now, both of them slide down a notch in the seedings, okay? And you have oh. this guy, Bo Bassett, world champion, number one, Bishop McCourt, who will not have a postseason this year. Correct. That's correct. So McCourt's uh, bringing all the big guns. Are you wanting to talk about your feelings on that ruling or are we just, no, on? no. I mean, that's done. Uh, that's no, done. No, no. I'm, I'm done beating the dead horse on that and the recruiting or whatever they I said. said they I'm going to pull it in if you wanted to. No. Got living. Okay. No problem. I um, talked to Bill Bassett la uh, last month at the national middle school duels. And he's like, we're going full steam ahead. Yeah. We're trying, we're going to, where it's going to be fun. We're, you're going to get to see us roll out at Ironman. I can't wait to see it. I like watching these guys. I've been watching them since they're little guys. They don't uh, stop. I, I, I want to see it. I, whatever PA, PIAA did to them or ruled, whatever it is, yeah. what it is. I, I yeah. Whatever. I'm not the mediator. I'm not the judge, jury, executioner. They're they're going to be at the Iron Man. I can't wait to see them. Zeb, I hear what you're saying. You want them to move to Ohio and come to Licking Heights. I hear okay. you. Listen, we can't Calm down. Say we Calm want... down. You're getting nuts over there. Okay. <laughs> hey, so. Uh, Let's so look. I, I would throw Bassett. I watched that kid wrestle in the world. I'm telling you, that kid does not stop. And you know what I love more than anything? He never, I never, well, I'll say this. I'm yet to see him dive at the legs. Everything he does is calculated. If yeah. he steps yeah. to the right, there's a reason he is stepping to the right. If he steps to the left, you had better, no energy is wasted from the starting whistle to the end whistle. Everything is calculated. And that kind of focus and, um, uh, determination and ability at that level at, at his age is remarkable. And he's my guy. I know you want to pick him, but I'm going to pick him first. Okay. So like Bo first Bo off, first off, you had, you missed your first chance at central Ohio homerism. Uh, no, I didn't. Jackson Roselli is my boy. Okay. Bo Bassett is amazing. Now, if they want to meet up in the finals, I'm okay with that. 
I'm okay with that. I don't know if they can. Though. He's the 12. I got to lower my brackets. Is in with sevens with 11. 12 is with four. Am I wrong on that? Uh, I'd have to look at a bracket to see. I know one. Yeah. So one's with one is with eight, nine, four. Ten. One's with four, five, eight, nine, maybe 13. But Jackson Roselli, uh, I want to say Jackson Roselli may be in the other half. But you look at it, you look at it, listen, Barrick Jordan, the artist formerly known as Barrick Jordan of the St. Paris Grand Falcons is now in Stillwater. Right. Once again, Stillwater could leave here with three or four champs. To me, that's that's amazingly impressive. They could have none as well. What's that? They could oh, have no. none. They could have none as well. Hey, it is the Iron Man. And yes. to your point about homerism, I want to see Jackson in there. Have you seen him recently by any chance? I have not. He is uh if I'm gonna bring back an 80s movie, um, Barry Gordy's Last Dragon. My dude's got the glove. He's got the glove. He's got it. So if you've never seen that movie, that reference is lost on you, and that's okay. However, Jackson Roselli has the glow. He's moving like water right now. I will go with a Seth Mendoza versus Bo Bassett final won by Bo Bassett. Seth Mendoza is a hammer, dude. Hey, Seth Mendoza, is, yeah, Mount Conrad, Illinois. Seth Mendoza is a hammer. <laughs> I'm a big Seth Mendoza uh, fan. Now, now listen, him and Nathan Desmond are going to have to hit to get the potentially get yep. the Barrick Jordan. I mean, of course, could you see Seth Mendoza not get to Barrick Jordan? Well, yeah, can can Barrick Jordan get through Louis Gill? I mean, there's there's just a lot there, man. And then shout out to uh, Kion McKinney, Illyria, uh, Pioneer State Placer from last year, sophomore. Good kid. I've been watching him grow up since he was a little pudgy guy. Uh, awesome. Dad was a state finalist for Sandusky High. Great to see him in the bracket. I'd like to see him getting that top eight. Um Jackson Roselli. I feel like Jackson Roselli's time is coming in the state of Ohio. Um, oh, it is. I, I'd like to see a top six finish out of him. You know, I think that that Possibly. guy is top six material. He's a top, you know, 12 seed. Um, but there's just so many really, 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 yes. really good guys in the, 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 I don't know anything about Mac Mogger out of Blackfoot, Idaho. Um, I don't either, but he's going to Missouri. Yeah. So he, he I mean, he's is a guy good. that that as uh, we shouldn't call a guy who's a four C the landmine, but I just don't have much data on a guy from Idaho. Yeah, uh, obviously they do. Um, national ranking wise, I want to compare this real quick. Go ahead, I'm and I'm going to mention how Barrett Jordan is already committed to Oklahoma State. Yes, Mac Mocker, who you're talking about right now, is committed to Missouri, and Louis Gill, the aforementioned that you mentioned about maybe four names ago, NC State. Like, I mean. You've got three guys that are ready to step onto a college mat and they're in this weight class and they're going to be top seven seeds. I mean, yeah. this is the kind of tournament that we're talking about here. We all know it's the Ironman. We get it. But until you really start to grasp like, OK, these are all college kids at this weight class in the top eight. They're yeah. already ready to step to the next level. That the, the next step of understanding is actually seeing it in action. And I'm telling you, man, six minutes drier. They're just moving constantly. No yeah. wasted effort ever. It's amazing. Uh, I think yeah. Bo Bassett, to, to the Bo Bassett, back to the Bo Bassett talk, uh, yeah. he's got a chance to try and join uh, David Taylor and Zahid Valencia as, um, you know, the only four-time. Four-timers. Four yeah, those yeah, two. I was going to say, what's their kind like of fame? And it's their four-timers, man. That's impressive. Yeah. So, so Bo Bassett, you know, um, obviously Marcus Blaze is in that conversation because he won last year as a freshman. Uh, Lockett, I believe. Lockett last year yeah, as a freshman. And where, where yeah. does he go to school? Remind me. Uh, Darian Still. Lockett goes to Stillwater. Oh, oh okay. There's another. I want to say he was okay. a freshman yeah. champ last year. He was. He was. He was. I interviewed him. It was right after um, Ferrari won his. Okay. Back to back Fra guys. Ferrari was a sophomore, though. Or, Yes, he was, but they won back to back. And I remember the interview. It was great. It was phenomenal. They had a lot of energy. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. So uh I you know, I'm gonna go Bo Bassett over Seth Mendoza in the finals. 
You're allowed to do that. I'll do Bo Bassett over Jackson Roselli in the finals. Okay, I'm a homer. I like where your head's at. I like where your head's at. Now, here's my big circle of this bracket. <laughs> I'm going to let you run with this. I got my favorite, but you love this weight class, so educate me, please. Okay, so just looking at this, Jax Forrest has a win. First off, he was third at the Clarion Open at 25. And then wow. what did he just win? He won – they went journeyman? Did, did he? I don't know the uh, – I don't know the answer to that. So he was third at an Open undersized. As a freshman, and it was for Clarion. It was Clarion. He's I don't want to. I don't. I really don't want to ask this question. But Zeb, I, let's pretend I've been working uh, my whole life. I became a very good co high school wrestler, so much so that I got uh, I walked on, or I was recruited by a college. And let's say I'm in my third year at this college, and I decide, hey, listen, for whatever reason, I got to take a red shirt. I'm going to go to this Clarion Open. I'm now at this Clarion Open. I've been wrestling in college for two years. My body has matured. I'm really doing well. In comes this freshman from high school and takes me out five to two or five to three. Where do I go mentally from there? I mean, dude, that's kind of crushing. I mean, that's kind of soul crushing because the thing about it is the kids are at such a high level now because the access to RTCs, people move to places, the clubs, Young Guns is their club. The satellite club. Jack's moved from North Carolina to yeah. PA. Um, so obviously they're willing to make the the sacrifice. Um, him and his yeah. family. Um, I interviewed him at the National Middle School Duels two years ago, and he was from North Carolina at the time. I mean, gotcha. I'm not I'm not nuts thinking he moved. Yeah. Um, you know, and and if you look at this weight, dude, just let let me run you through some of these guys. Okay, run me. <laughs> Lilla Dahl's, I want to say, a world champion from Wyoming Seminary. Marcus wow. Blaze is the Damn OW. He's the OW from the U from the from the from Fargo Cadets uh, U sixteen. Yeah, I want to say that Bo Bassett was fifth at the weight or fourth at the weight. Bro. That Marcus Blaze won and was OW of. Dude, how good is this weight class? <laughs> It's like so ridiculous, like so ridiculous. I mean, Leo DeLuca. I'm just looking at the names that I like just off the top of my head knows things about and or have seen. Yeah, it is. It is disgusting. Ethan Navarro watched him last year. Seven seed right there. He's from yes. Florida. Lake. He's got a couple of brothers. I'm pretty sure that are in college. I think he knows what he's doing around the mat. He's the seven seed. I love how good Florida and the presence that Florida has brought to this tournament. I like Union County, Kentucky, Jordan Rainey stepping in there. Um, Marcus Blaze had one of the greatest seasons in the history of Ohio high school wrestling last year. I don't yeah. believe I don't believe he surrendered an offensive point. And he was like 51 and 0, smashed everybody, major decision in the state finals. He had one of the arguably the greatest seasons not freshman season he had the greatest freshman season yeah. in the history of ohsaa history the ohio high school athletic association you want to rank the seasons for freshmen yeah marcus plays number one number one freshman year ever in the history of the state of ohio it's not up for debate and a top 10 Three. season that ranks him with like the joe heskett the mike uh the the, the tom milkovich season senior yes. season the the sam Nider senior season, the junior season of Joe Haskett, you can put him in in that conversation. The Dustin Schlater senior season, say, Logan, St Logan Stieber senior season, you can put Marcus Blay. I will put his season up against those the, the names I just mentioned. I said, I said Tom Milkovich, dude. I know. I, I'm thinking about Mark Zimmer. I mean, it was unheard of that a freshman would be on the varsity. It's not unheard of, I guess, but uh, but Mark Zimmer is a four-time state champ, the first four-time state champ in Ohio, and I'm sure he had to beat someone to do that. Like Mark Zimmer was a real deal. As a matter of fact, uh, the Godfather himself, uh, Brian Brakeman, said he was the the most polished wrestler he's ever seen, and I think that was after. Maybe that was in reference to Alan Freed. I, I like when Alan Freed was coming through. He said Mark Zimmer was by far the best he'd ever seen. If I'm not mistaken, if I've got that correctly. So that was Marcus Blaze last year in Ohio. Since then, yeah. took some losses. I want to say he got woodshedded 
by uh, Jax at the uh, Super 32. He defaulted out yes. to eighth place after he placed. But Marcus got a little tweaked at the uh, Super 32. Jax put it on him. Um, let me run you through the rankings versus the seedings. Are you ready? I love this. Go. Via Matt Scouts, Willie, Sailor, shout out. Number gotcha. one, number one, Luke Lilladol. Lilladol is yeah. your number two seed, number one ranked wrestler in the country. Number two, gotcha. Jordan Rainey, who is your four seed, is your two ranked wrestler yeah. in the country. Number three, Jax Forrest is your one seed, but ranked third yep. in the country. This is a pretty good bracket so far. <laughs> then we <laughs> skip they skip down to the next uh Kill Carry, Jake Craps, who are not in the bracket. Really and then number five is Jake Craps. Okay. Uh, and then your number six ranked wrestler in the country, who's the OW of Fargo and had the greatest freshman season in OHSA history, Marcus Blaze, is your third seed. I said Jordan Rainey, who's the fourth seed, is number two ranked wrestler in the country. And then from there it goes, there's kind of a, a drop off in the, the as far as the rankings. Yeah. Um, Leo DeLuca is a 14, he's the sixth seed. Uh, where's his name from? The you got Hunter Taylor in there. Kale, five seed Kale is Lart. Lart was it? Uh, Larzadin. Lart Lartisan. Lartisan. Lartisan yep. is mm, your eighth. He's your eighth ranked wrestler in the country, and he is your five seed. Like Nebraska. I said, yeah, Leo DeLuca is at 14 and he's your sixth seed. I do and then Ether Rivera is 16th ranked and he's the seventh seed. And that is the last ranked yeah guy that I see that I can match it up. Hold on, let me see. No, Hunter Taylor. Oh, Hunter Taylor. Go. Hunter Taylor is the nine seed and ranked 18th. UNC commit. Coleman Scott's yeah. gonna be there and he's gonna be like, hey, where's my boy? Yeah. So he is so if you look at how 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 many top 20 guys yeah, or just in the top nine. It's it's pretty impressive. Seven, eight. Um, let's just get down to let's just get down to it. I'm going Marcus Blaze. Healthy Marcus Blaze over Jax Forrest. Who you got? I'm actually going to reverse that. I'm going to go Jax Forrest over Marcus Blaze. Not because I'm a homer, but I got to be a contrarian. You chose Marcus Blaze, so therefore I have to pick the opposite. Okay. And I mean, uh, I mean dude, hey, the, the, Ethan Rivera yeah. can win the weight. Leo DeLuca can win the weight. I mean, I was just uh, about to say. Hunter Taylor can win 60. the weight. I mean, you can go way down here. Um, geez, I mean, Becca's got a deal at fourteen. Know. Cole Campbell, who can, who can probably these guys do. When you get into these 13, 14, 15, 16s, they're pretty good guys. Uh, Tommy yeah. Link, twelve seed. I mean, yeah. Brownsburg, Indiana, Jake Hockaday. I, I hear you. Hey, this way, that's just disgusting. You, DeLuke is a six seed. Anytime, anytime, like when the NCAA brackets come out, I always look at the six seed. When I'm in these pools and you you have to rank your guys, I always look at the six seed. And I, I always remember Jay Jaggers. He looked at his bracket and they were like, oh, you're the six seed. What the heck, man? He goes, no, 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 no. I got this figured out. I'm going to be a national champ. Like the second he saw the bracket, his brain went into like uh, – like uh, uh, Goodwill hunting mode, and he was like, "I've got it. I got to figure it out, guys. I'm gonna be the national champ." Like he knew automatically just by looking at the six seed. He was like, "I got my path, guys. I'm a national champ. Mark it down." And guess what he did? He freaking won the national tournament. So when I see Deluca as a six seed, I'm just thinking to myself, "Man, this guy right here is the guy that no one's gonna be talking about." Bam, there's your champ. But I'm picking Jackson. Uh, I'm sorry, Jacks Forrest over uh, Marcus Blaze. Okay, that's what I got for you. It's a, that weight class, it could go a multitude of other ways. Yeah, um, hey, I said I'll see C4 in the Army. I know what I it mean, does. Jordan Rainey can win the weight. Uh, Lardison, Lard, Lardison can win the weight. Leo DeLuca can win the weight. R R Rivera can win the late. weight. Lilla Dahl can obviously win the weight. He's a world champion. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just hammer time. Um, 126. Ben DeVino, your number one seed, St. Charles uh, East. Illinois, yep. uh, Mark Anthony McGowan, champ last year, Blair, Mason Gibson, yet another um, 
Hammer out of Bishop yeah. Court, uh, Bo Bassett's cousin, Max Gallagher, New York guy, Dylan Campbell, Legacy Christian, state champ, Jacob Joyce, JJ Rogers, uh, McComas, Stillwater, geez, oh, Pete's man. Yet another yeah. loaded weight, uh, state runner up, Ryan Avalos from Ohio. Um, anybody else you're kind of seeing that's jumping out at you? Um, uh, the only one that would, would jump out at me would be, uh, well, you mentioned Avalos, but I, the thing that's going to jump out at me, O'Neill is from Pennsylvania, right? The, he's the only guy other than Gibson, who's a Pennsylvania kid outside of Dragon or Ryan, but Wyoming Seminary, I'm not going to knock on the guys. They're just, they're, they come from all over to get to Wyoming Seminary. Um, I mean, Malvern Prep, I guess, is the same way. But yeah. I just think to myself, three PA guys in that in that there, and uh, man, I tell you, those guys they have a knack for turning, which is a little bit different here in Ohio. And I think somebody just got done talking about this a little while ago. The difference between Ohio and um, and Pennsylvania, and they seem to do well when when they're in a position where they're on top and they can turn a guy. They're getting two backs or three backs, and that changes the course of the match so when i look at this and i see these guys all the way down here at the eight nine or the ten i, I think to myself well, who are they going to beat because they're a low seed and they're going to they're going to work their way through the bracket in this case but i, I think th this is what i have written down for 126 all that to say i have mark anthony mcgowan versus mason gibson as your semifinal. what are you doing at noon on saturday morning or 11 a.m <laughs> dude i was thinking the same thing right that's now. a that's a nasty semifinal. But here's the thing, Mason, Mason Gibson's super explosive, right? I mean, he's super yes. explosive. He's a freshman at Bishop McCourt. Um, but the thing with him is if people can kind of neutralize the explosiveness of him, yeah, he might struggle with an Orion. He might struggle with a you know, it's a 10 2 matchup, right? Yeah. Or 10, 10, no, seven. Wait, who's against three? Six three. He might yeah. struggle with a Jacob Joyce, right? I do not – I have never seen a Rhode Island guy. Jacob Joyce, Rhode Island guy. And he's going to get tested early if he can get to Mason Gibson. I mean, it's probably going to be one of the bigger matches that guy's ever wrestled in his life. Yeah. And that Jacob Joyce is six seed. But you got to neutralize the, the the explosiveness. McGowan, I can't I can't bet against – I'm going to pick McGowan to win the weight. Um, and I will take him against Davino. I'll go Mark Anthony McGowan versus Davino. I don't have any problem with that selection. I really don't. From what I have, uh, if anything, Mason Gibson, I think, uh, I think, I think Bishop McCord is coming with a chip on their shoulder. I know yeah. the dad's yeah. full spread, but I think they're coming in with a chip on their shoulder, and I think that might be a deciding factor. I could be wrong. I probably am wrong, but I will say this: hey, Is Rhode Island the smallest state in the union, or is Delaware? It, it, it did. It is. It is. Okay. Area wise, it is. And and how many? How many wrestlers do we know from Rhode Island like it, that have made the, the NCAA? Jacob, Jacob Joyce is the only dude I know. <laughs> well, he's going to Stanford all the way in California to, to wrestle in college. Uh, that's that's 3,260. Pona Gossett, Rhode Island. I hope this Jacob Joyce guy it turns it on. Hey, you and know then, what? I hope? I hope he watches this and brings us a T-shirt. I'm a large, by the way, because yeah. I would rock that. Double, double X. Double X, I'm a large. I'm actually a large point two five, but they don't make those. So I'm a large. And I'm telling you, I would rock that thing on Saturday. I would absolutely crush that thing. Listen, looking at these guys, I got a Marmion Academy guy, Avalos Perrysburg, mm -hmm. Bixby, Oklahoma. I see you, Stillwater. I see you, Stillwater. Stillwater, dude, they could absolutely, if they wrestle out of their minds, they could, they could, I mean, they wrestle out of their minds because I got another guy placing high for them. Obviously, okay. besides the two returning champs, Voinovich. Um, Barrett Jordan. I mean, the, I think what Blair Academy does is they just, it's just like death by a sol thousand pricks. Man, thousand so thousand solid. needle holes. They just, they're so deep. Yeah. And they're placing at every weight in the top eight. And I will say this, and this is true of St. Ed's at, at the OHSA state tournament. They are built for that. They yeah. never yeah. make a mistake at the state tournament. They rarely make a mistake at the state tournament. When you get into this, uh, the Ironman tournament, I don't – it's so rare that 
that um, Blair makes a mistake. It is so rare. Their kids are so poised. They always, almost always do the right thing. Like if they need to, you know, circle right on time, this way the ref doesn't call for stalling or they take that half jab, ref doesn't call stalling, they don't give up the point, they win 4-3. You know what I mean? It's always that way. They're so smart wrestling IQ wise. They're so smart. So to your point, Blair, Blair does a great job. Can that be the difference maker for McGowan? Uh, I'm, I'm calling Mason Gibson to win it. So that's just me. Okay. There you go. All right. Yeah. Yeah. 132, Sergio Lumley, Kale Hughes, Vincent Robinson, um, Fugit, 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 how do you say that? Fugit, I'm going Fugit because I, I like a PG show. Okay. No, I like a G <laughs> show. That's a sweet name, by the way, Zan. Yeah. Uh, Malvern Prep, uh, I'm going with my guy, though. I'm going to stick with Ohio here. I'm going super Ohio homerism here. <laughs> I am putting... Jackson Joy into the final. Okay. Against, I like the Ohio not. theme here. I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh Against six. Six is in with three. Ooh, Vincent Robinson. That's kind of a tall order. Um who do you like? Who do hey, you what like? Year is Robinson? What year is Robinson from Illinois? What year is he? I gotta I gotta look. Hold on. While you're looking that up, I'm just gonna make mention that Kale Hughes. He wrestles for a school out of Oklahoma. That particular school is still water. So I'm just putting it out there that if he even wrestles to his seed, he's a finalist, which is a lot of points in your 32 man bracket there, buddy. It's yeah. wild to me looking at this. When you have Vincent Robert Robinson, yeah. who's a defending champ, who's the third seed. <laughs> Dude. Welcome to Iron so Man. So ridiculous, dude. Going to die. There will be weeping and gnashing. Of okay, I, I listen. I just don't think I just don't know if Jackson Joy can beat Vincent Robinson. I, I will go with Vincent Robinson in the finals. Okay. okay. All right. I like him versus Sergio. You like Sergio? I do like him, but I I haven't taken on Kale Hughes because I got to ride that horse. All the way home. Yeah, I would say Vincent Robinson takes a title over Lumley. Good. We need – well, I'm a Central Ohio guy, so that's Columbus. That's Ohio State. I can't have Lumley, who's a Michigan commit, winning this thing. So either Kale Hughes wins it or my dude Jackson Joy wins it. It's one of the two. Okay. But you got to pick one of them because six is in the same half of the bracket as two. I know. So I'm going Kale Hughes. Okay. There you go. Oh, I wanted some Ohio homerism, but listen, Vincent Robinson was super impressive last year. Um, I, He looked amazing. He looked amazing. Awesome. He won a title. Uh, I'm going to stick with that. I have, I love, I love that he, the, the defending champ who was the two seed last year is the three seed this year. Boom. Hey, <laughs> you get what you earn here. That's the bottom line. It's yeah. the Iron Man. Yeah, you get so, it. You get I it. do get it. And yep. Hey, 138. Is Nasir Bailey the real deal here? The returning champ. I mean, is he the real deal? This guy is hey, do you know he's you know where he's committed to by any chance? Bailey? Yeah. Where's he committed? Little Rock. Rock. Arkansas Little Rock. Is he going Rock, to baby? Rock? Yes, That's right. I, I remember. It. I remember when Arisman and them got him to commit. They made yes. like a crazy good deal. They were making really cool uh, videos about it. Yeah, I just I'm seeing it now. Right. Yep. Um, he's your number one ranked wrestler in the country, and think about what that does for Little Rock, Arkansas. Let's just talk about that for a little bit. This year, roll with it because I want to talk about it. I've been saying this for years. When when it's, well, Little Rock just came on like the last five years. They're Division One now, and. When when you can be a part of pick a school, any school that has tradition since 1964, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, Iowa, Minnesota, Ohio State, when you can be a part of those schools and be I'm not I don't want to mean this disparagingly when you can be another name on the wall. Little Rock just became a division one school. You can be the name on the wall. You can yeah. be the trailblazer for me. Like in my brain, I think about this, like you're already amazingly talented. These college coaches can tweak that to take you up another notch or two. 
they, they're going to do that for you. They're going to put you in a position to win. And with that in mind, you can do that at an at a school that needs names on the wall. You could be that name. You're the first four-time qualifier, national qualifier for them. You're the first All-American for their school. When I think back to Campbell and they had um, oh, Kreiser, Nathan Kreiser was a their first All-American. Like I, I didn't go to Campbell. I have no ties to Campbell. But when I saw that, I thought to myself, man, that is absolutely legit. A coach came in, made that place a viable candidacy for the next up and coming coach with hard work, dedication, and made it happen. Right now, coach is making this happen at Little Rock, and the, Bailey is going to be the guy that people look to and say, that's what started it all. And to me, for me, Nasir Bailey, hats off to you for making that choice. That's what I got for you. I love it. He's a Chicago guy, right? Uh, yes, he is. Yeah. Okay, so let's just talk about this real quick. Last year, Rich Rich Township, because it's right on. I want to say it's the Indiana border, though. Oh, okay. Like, like it's like a Harvey Twister. Um, his, let me talk to you about his his tournament last year. Second round, minute twenty three fall. Third round, quarterfinals, Tech fall, twenty to three, five minutes and thirty eight seconds. You wrestling me? Jeez. Uh, that is okay. That was the third round. Uh, quarterfinals. Okay, here we go. Yeah, one tech minute, one minute, forty six second pinfall. Semifinals, ten to two. Major. Finals, six minute, twenty eight second pinfall over Mac Church. I wonder what happened there. I I'd have to go back and watch that. Did they just try something in overtime and just got pinned? I think I remember this match now that I'm yes, thinking about yes, it. Yes, yes, that's yes, yes, pinned that's right. Erupted. That's, that's right. Oh yes, Nasir. I'm gonna tell you right now, Nasir Bailey is the real deal. There will be no higher homerism picking against him, but I will take an Ohioan in the finals against him. And Omar, Omar Ayub. Ayub. One hundred percent. I will take an Ohioan in the finals against him, but Nasir hey. Bailey's just too much, dude. He's just hey. he's just too much. Now listen, I will say this. Crescent Valley, Oregon has as tough guy in Gillette. Um obviously uh Vince Bazakis is at Notre Dame, Green Pond, he's uh good. younger brother, right? Yep. Of uh Nick. Yeah, Colin Rath, yeah. tougher than a two dollar steak. Cannon <laughs> Webster out of Illinois. Um, Jacob, uh, what's his name? Iowa's one ninety seven from Colorado. Nate, uh, no, Iowa's one ninety seven. One ninety seven. Iowa's one ninety seven. Uh, NCAA finals Not last year. Not Weber. Uh, <laughs> Jacob Warner. Warner. So the W. So Jacob Warner is from Washington Community, I believe. Uh -huh. He's from Washington, uh, Illinois. That's his high school. Okay. He was the Iron Man champ. Um, I believe it's Washington. Yeah, Washington community. Hey, um, I but listen, him. I cannot go against Nasir Bailey, but I will take Omar Ayub against him in the finals. Nasir Bailey by a lot. I I really believed Omar was going to face the toughest foe he had faced all year long in his state finals match. And uh it, he did. It was a tough match. Don't get me wrong, but Ayub shined. He really shined. He really impressed me. Then he went up to beat the streets in Cleveland and was able to take on Dave McClellan, who's another uh, local guy. In I was just going to talk about him and and uh, Jeremy Ginter. And I'm telling, and they're they're pretty low for me in my estimation. But it is the Iron Man, so maybe not so low. But Omar was able to defeat uh, McClellan. And I thought to myself, number one, it was a very well rest coached match, excuse me, very well coached match. And number two, a very well wrestled match. When you have those two things combined, instead of being the, being the sixth seed and finishing sixth place, you're going to go up a rung or two or three or end up in the finals, as you mentioned. So that's what I got for my, my Omar Ayub homerism. All right. Boom. Okay. I am going to go with McClellan and Ginter both placing there the 14 and the 15 seeds i got Good. them both in the top eight i i'd slot like mcclellan in at seventh and ginter okay. at sixth okay you know i watched ginter his freshman year at the state tournament because it was at um darby so i was doing taping there and i remember thinking to myself 
who in the world is this kid? I went to the coach. I said, hey, coach, is this kid uh, going anywhere next year? He's like, what are you talking about? I was like, well, is he, is he committed anyways? He's going to college. He's like, he's a freshman. I was like, bruh, are you Man, serious? He's super he's like, mean. Oh, yeah. Super mean. Jeremy oh, Ginter's super mean. He, he might have been a sophomore, but still the point still remains. Yeah, he's he under was very I got it. Yep, there you go. Next um, up. 144, returning runner-up, Mac Church is your number one. Brock Hermans wrestled in some, in some opens and done well for Brexville. Sam Cartella is the cross wrist tilt guy. I want to say mm-hmm. Cartella is going to West Point. Yes. Brock Herman's going to Ohio State. Where's Mac Church committed? Do you know? Mac Church would be Virginia Tech. Virginia hokey, Tech. Hokey, he's going... hokey, hokey. Yep. That's it. Church, a Number runner one. up last Number year to Bailey. And a Sir Bailey pinned him in overtime. Um, Brock Herman. I like I, I like Brock Herman in the finals uh, versus Hale. Voinovich of Stilly. Mm. So you got a Stillwater kid making the finals. Is that what you're saying yes. to me? Yes. Well, here's my problem with that. Ty Wilson, Penn commit, just recently committed to Penn. Ty Wilson is incredibly impressive. And I'm going to say is this. Ty Wilson is, a three time, is he a three time state champ? He's a two timer right now two-timer. with two years left. Got it. But here's the deal he has gone from 113 to 132 or 138 seamlessly. He, you couldn't even tell he uh, went up weight classes because he still wrestles tough and he's grown into the weight class. He, he, he might cut a little. I don't know. The boy is jacked and no wrestler has ever been too strong. And I think he's trying to prove that wrong. He is getting so strong. He is amazingly strong. And then follow that up with Michigan State recruit Boots Van Dyke from Walsh Jesuit homeschool can. He's right now the 11 seed. Can he place top six? Can he place top eight? Can he get on the podium? I, I have I have Boots been there. Boots is in there. Uh, I talked to uh, Boots Van Dyke. Is, I like him. He's tough. He's a runner up last year in Division One in Ohio. He was a placer at Ironman last year. Yeah. He's got that he's, I, iconic picture. I want to th- say Tony Rotundo took it. He lost his tooth, and they got a picture of his tooth falling out. Yes. He yeah, broke his FYI, tooth. Tony. Yeah. Tony's um, going to be there. Okay. So. Once again, we're Ohio heavy here, right? We're Ohio heavy. You get that. <laughs> Everybody gets that. that. Anybody watching this gets that, you know, like uh yep. oh, Jaden Robinson, look out. Illinois guy, the eight seed. From and the then, same school. And year. then Cuvelli Cantilla can can All right. Hey, Cuvelli at nine. Cuvelli uh, at nine. Yeah, yeah, see I see him. him. That yep. dude is a hammer. Valley, oh, uh, dude, this weight no, class no. is really good. That's um, my double squared weight class. Listen, that guy, that Cuvelli guy is going to place. I got you. Cuvelli is going to place. place. Jaden Robinson will place. Ty Wilson will place. Boots will place. Brody Dominic hey, and Mitchell Younger will all place. You, that number 14 right there, freshman state champ last year, actually had a great, great tournament. Phenomenal finals match. His first match at the Marion Harding uh, Christmas tournament here in Ohio, his first match was against a returning state placer from the year prior, and he ended up winning by one there. Just, like, the kid has ice in his veins. They're, Watterson is – they were cut from the program. They cut the program for, like, two or three years, and they had a resurgence at the youth level, which led to the high school level, and now those guys are filling in. He might be the first of that group coming through. Great coaching staff there. Doing a great job. So you're saying he's going to play? I don't think he was at Iron Man last year, so he's going to have some eyes open. Sam but Cartella. He's... Sam Cartella could roll up on people though. Sam Cartella is a problem. Sam Cartella is a really good tilter on top. He's got an unbelievable cross wrist tilt. Sam Cartella is really good, dude. The he also Western has Reserve guy. Yeah, I want to say he's West Point. Yeah, he is. He is. Coach Ward um, got him. And then okay, so I oh I took I took uh, I took Kale Voinovich versus Brock Herman in the final. They were high school teammates. So a Brexville all Brexville final. Yes. We're gonna go with Brock Herman. Nah, nah. We're gonna go with Kale Voinovich. We're gonna go with yes, Stilly. That's an extra four points for the win. Yes, there you go. You it's made still, it. Hey, real quick, still water. If you're still, but playing, hey, Brexville, Brexville's winning either way. 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Did you happen to see his older brother wrestle against Lehigh? Against Manzona oh, Bryant? That, yeah, it was against freaking Manzona Bryant. It was. And I'm telling you, man, that opening. 15 13, match of the year so far. Yeah, it was amazing. It was he phenomenal. He chopped wood on him. He chopped wood on him. And carried water. He chopped wood and carried water. Okay. 150. Here's your boy. Let Darian lock it, dude. That Total is my boy. Stud. Listen, I've got an all time final here. It's an all time Zeb Homer final. My oh, all time Homer final here. And it's going to be explosions. People smash. Oh, it's going to be a semifinal. Never mind. Okay. Winton Denkins with Darian Lockett. Get your oh. popcorn. I can't wait. I mean, if Winton Denkins can beat William Henkel, it will be. You know where Denkins is committed? Of course I do. Where's do, you, do, you want, do you want me to say it? Yeah. Do you want me to talk humps? Yes, I do. Yeah. Wrong. Humps up. Camels, right? You know what their mascot, the name of their mascot is? What's the camel's name now? Gaylord. Is it Gaylord? Yep. Do you know why they're the camels? <laughs> nope. Nope. It used to be a dry area. And uh, if you were going to survive, you had to be a camel. You, no alcohol. But I think that's Got since it. changed. But it's a small Got camp. It. Small Got camp. it. But there Got you go. It. Uh, who do you like here? Who uh, do you like in the bracket? So I just called out my semifinal. I can't. It's hard to go I, against Lockett, dude. It's hard I'm to going go against Lockett. Lockett. I got Lockett taking on um, – hey, I'm going to go with this Nebraska commit, Dalton, from Pueblo East. I think Colorado has a – give me a second to, this, to get this in my brain right. California, in my opinion, even though they're not in this tournament, when I they would come, I thought they – and when I see guys at the national tournament from Cali, they have a different style of wrestling. It's a little loose. Pennsylvania guys are real tight, and so as you move across the country – you get a different style of wrestling. I think Colorado and I really think Illinois a little bit blend those two, even though Iowa and Nebraska are in the middle of those two. I think Iowa, I'm sorry, uh, Colorado and Illinois blend the two uh, far coasts of wrestling styles very well. And I think that's going to pay dividends for Dalton here from Pueblo East Colorado. He's going to be taking on Lockett in the finals and Lockett's going to win because I need Stillwater to win. There's right. your answer. I am going with you – know, I want to just go full Homer Homer style here. But um, I mean, let's go with Chris Crawford of Wyoming Sam at seven versus I Lockett because I think the guy can navigate the bracket. Okay. I need to know I need to know more on P.J. Duke. I really do need to watch him a little more. Well, we're going to have to watch him. Yeah, I mean, I just don't you know much to... about P.J. Hey, Duke. don't tempt me with a good time. Let's go to 157. <laughs> Because I've got a quarterfinal match that is ready to take the cake. Ethan Byrne versus yep. Christopher Ernest. Yep. Is going to be bananas. Ethan Burden's a placer here last year. Ernest, a returning champ from Ohio. D1. Um, he's up a weight. Wow. Wow. Then Luke, uh, James, Luke James is 11. I do not know Patara out of Indian Creek. Sure uh, enough, you want a giveaway from ITC. We did a oh, giveaway. Owen, Owen Egan. Tell me about Owen Egan at the 16th hey, season for sales. the sales. Hey, this kid. Hey, I'm going to tell you two things. Number one, Colin Palmer is doing a great job at Columbus to sales. He is, he is, I believe he is two months away from getting his guys primed to win the D2 state championship. Those guys are firing on all cylinders, number one. Number two, they just had the Mark Zimmer Memorial Tournament, and they won that over Olin Tangio. Liberty. Now, granted, Olin Tangent Liberty wasn't a complete 100% full strength, but you have to have the pieces in place in order to win your tournament like that. Number, that's number one. Number two, they're moving forward and they're they're picking up steam as they go. They have an absolute hammer at 190 or 215 in Max Shulaw. They have his younger brother, Lincoln. They have Dave McClellan at 32. They have right here, Owen Egan at 57. They also have uh, Miles Rush. Miles might be the dad's name, but Rush. They have a number of kids who are absolutely very good. So when they're showing up on the 16th seed here, I like to see that. Clearly, since I'm an essential Ohio guy, uh, it's going to be Ethan Burden versus Owen Egan in the finals. Uh, clearly, is, is this is my call. But I do think Burden can make the finals. Uh, that's not that's not homerism. That's being honest. His 
length is I, I, he might be six one or six two. He is incredibly long and he deceptively strong because you think he's so long. He doesn't like he doesn't wear it like a, a like a like a one twenty five pounder in college. Like just a short little stout little rolly dude. He's real tall and real thin, but. Man, he's got some strength, and he's quick. He is slicker than Goose Poo, just really good, man. Ethan Burden is my finalist, and he's going to be taking on uh, – where's the Stillwater guy? Five, six? They could they could see each other. Great. Yeah. I want those two to final, in the finals. Probably okay. Seal is probably going to make it. He's a PSU I, committee. I will take Christopher Ernest in the finals, okay? I'm going okay. full homer here. Do you understand? Are you, you ready? Got I got Lukey James. Lukey James had, what do you call it, on the ropes Lillard last year at the state tournament. Yeah, yeah. Big fan of Luke James for the Grand Falcons of Southmore. I'm going Luke James versus Christopher Ernest and Ernest by four in the finals. I by Listen, four. I can't wait for the amount of people to be like, what are you thinking picking against Joe Seeley? <laughs> <laughs> my boy Luke James gonna have. I him. love it. I don't even mind. I don't even mind a little bit because this next one, this next one, I was looking. Yeah, you might have some words for me on this next one. Wait, are you gonna tell me that Cramblet is gonna make it? Are you gonna tell me that Ty Miller isn't gonna make it? No, no, no. I'm telling you, I'm picking Ty Miller as a finalist. Are you really? Yes, I'm gonna tick Ty Miller in the finals versus Cade. Ziola. Stop. You can stop. T- tell me to stop. Actually, no, that was wrong. That was wrong. I had Dash Lammer for this one. Okay. I had Dash Lammer. I had Dash Lammer versus Ty Miller in the semis is what it was. Because ten's in with two. Yeah. And then Dash Lammer is in with threes in with six. Yep. So I had Ty Miller beating Dash Lammer, but Dash Lammer can win the weight. Um, get past Ke- Colin Kelly. Hold on, hold on. Just, I mean, hold on. Let me find a coin here, real quick. I'm gonna say this one more time. Mount Carmel's been good since. Hold I was on, a- hold on, hold on, hold on. Dash Lammer heads. Dash Lammer heads. Ty Miller tails. You ready? Yep. Here heads. Okay. Dash Lammer heads. Ty Miller tails. Heads. Oh! Lost it, lost it, lost it. Of course you did. Dash Lammers heads. Ty Miller tails. Heads. Dash Lammer to the finals. Yes. Off the bottom. And he's going to take <laughs> on Cade Ziola. Oh, my gosh. Got it? Yeah, I got it. I got it right here. I'll, I'll, take, I'll, take, I'll take Nebraska. Dash Lammer to win it. Hey, real quick, do me a favor. Look at number 11. I was going to pick – I wanted to pick Ty Miller because Ty Miller's a freak. He won Fargo. He's really good. He's kind of like the best guy, top two, three guy. You know, he's the guy that, like, St. Ed's is going to need bonus out of and a title this year. And he'll get um, it. And he's, and he's a sophomore. He's a uh, finalist last year as a freshman. At, was it 57? Yeah. Yeah. So I really like Ty Miller. I think he's just, like, incredible. His twin brother's pretty tough. Two um, yeah, that was a coin flip, by the way. That was a coin flip because Dash Lammer, Dash Lammer. Here's the thing. Ty Miller can beat Dash Lammer. There's no question it was a coin flip. Um, But can he neutralize the explosiveness? Ty Miller's a freak, dude. He's super explosive. He's tall. Can't wait to watch. I'm a big Can't fan, watch. man. He's going to win this year, I think. He's going to win the state title. But, man, Iron Man, he win this. He can win this weight. Let's go. Hey, Josh, How about Angelo Ferrari? Wait. It says that he's from Melissa, Texas. Did I miss a move? The whole family move? Wait, wait, what? What? It says What's Melissa, on? Texas. No, I believe there's must have been a, there's a move. Man. There's a move. That's right. No, that's a move. That's correct. I want to go back to Josh Boykin. Does he have an older brother that wrestles for Ohio State? Or wrestled yes. for Ohio State? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay. Boykin from – they're, they're from Tennessee. Okay. Okay. No, what? not Josh Boykin here. No, there's another Josh Boykin I'm thinking of. Okay. I got a lot of names in my brain, yeah. man. No, 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 no. I don't believe Josh Boykin's related to the Tennessee Boykins. Noted. I don't believe, but let me check. 
We'll find out. I and mean, we're going to be talking to all these people this week. We're shooting in the dark <laughs> a lot of the time here, dude. Excuse me. Uh, you said my name on your broadcast. That's not how you say my name. Oh, by the way, and that's not my cousin. That's not my brother. Oh, hey, sorry, man. I did not know. By the way, I'm a large T-shirt. You want to bring me a T-shirt? I'd love to wear it. Gunner Cramble, it's pretty good for Graham. He, he is. He is. He can win the weight. Um, you know this is pretty good at 175? This is just, I'm just, in I mean, case you 175, know. I'm not even like, I'm not, I'm not, there's someone I'm not picking against. Rocco Welsh. Is that guy good or is that guy good? You're going to go Ben Adia? No. Rocco Welsh. No. Okay. Ben Adia is going to pick so Michigan. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Rock Chandler came wait down. a minute. Stop. Stop. Ty, Ty Miller's the 10 seed. He was the state runner up last year, right? To uh, Lillard. Or was Jarrell the runner up? Hold on. We can't confuse this. We have to fix this now. I will. I'll get confused. I, I can't. I can't. Get... Listen, I cannot mess this up. I got to fix this. I thought Ty I was in the finals against, uh, what's his name? Who's your Columbus guy? Who's your Westerville North guy going to Iowa State? Oh, um, he's already there. His name is, starts with a C, Connor. Dude, Uten, he was on Athletes. Uten, Uten. Yeah, Connor Uten. Dude, he's a hammer, by the way. Connor Uten's a freaking hammer. Who who did Uten pin? We got to find this out before we move on. I got I actually have to figure this out. Can I? This, oh, is, an, this is like an. Inex- I know they're I know they're twins, but you can't mess this up this bad. Yeah. Um. Hold on. Let me tell you because, um, I took. I took. I mean, even though I took Dash Lammer, right? But it matters yeah. if it's Ty Miller or if it's Jarrell Miller. You understand that? It, it I matters. Understand. I do understand what you mean. Because they are, they are very different. Hey, um, Jarrell Miller got pinned in the finals as a freshman. Jarrell. So Jarrell, the bigger. Okay, the small. So Ty loses a coin flip on a coin flip to Dash. Ty did not place last year, did he? Let me make sure. I want to find out. I don't, see, I don't even see him in here. Oh, there he is. He, 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 he did not place. Ernest, and he did not place. He did not place. So Ty win. Miller. So I did confuse him. Ty did not win Fargo. Jarrell won Fargo. Hey, real quick about Ty. He lost to the guy who got first in the state tournament, and he lost to the guy who got third in the state tournament. You yeah. talk about unlucky. I bet that's the only time that happened. I mean, <laughs> probably not. That's, but, uh, no, in, the, in the state tournament that year. That yeah. year. Yes. Dude, this weight class is loaded with Ohio guys. I'm not picking against Rocco Welsh. I'm going to tell you who I think Rocco Welsh's finalist is going to be, his finalist opponent. And I think that that's going to be Jarrell Miller. Okay. State runner up last year to Uton. Um, I mean, him and Vanady are going to hit, dude. That should be good. I mean, that's that's one we want to see early on, right? <laughs> is that quarterfinal? That's a quarterfinal. Dude, that's Friday night, seven thirty. Let's go. Yeah, that's a quarter. Yes. Uh, yes. What? Oh my gosh, this is incredible. Yes, because hey. three three hits two then, and the set, yeah. set up three to hit two. Six sadly, three. I'll sadly. take. I'll take it. Now listen, I'm gonna take. Wow, Miles Tackett and Dylan Newsom. Look at that. Look at that quarterfinal. No. Yeah. No, that's a round of 16. Yes, that's a round of 16. That's right, because the quarterfinal. Oh the Neat, so Neat well. Bach for Buckeye. Connor Havel, state champ, is the 13th seed in Division Three. Oh, my God, dude. Hey, time out real quick. Tackets versus Newsom is a round of 16. Do you know what you get for winning that? You get to <laughs> Rocco. Rocco. <laughs> hey, congratulations on your win, bud. Rocco, Rocco's a Buckeye. Gonna yep, be a guy. He's committed. Waynesburg, Pennsylvania. Yep. Uh, Rocco's a returning champ here. Won a close match. Dominated though, like two nothing or something. I want to say. I'd have to look back at the bracket. Hold on. Let me tell you what Rocco's score was. What did he won seventy five last year. Dude's a hammer. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, yeah. no, that was Brody Conley. Brody Conley. Rocco won. He went. Oh five. yeah, from uh, from Copley, right? Yeah, then he went. Ro- yeah, Rocco won sixty five. Yeah, he won one nothing in the final. I thought it was two nothing. It was one nothing. Rocco beat Norman of Blair one nothing. It was like ride out or something, or he yeah. got out and rode the guy out. Yeah. So Rocco, Rocco, but it was like I don't feel like he was threatened in the match. Okay. Um. Okay. So Rocco over Jarrell Miller. 
Leave I'm going to go Dylan Newsom over. No, I can't. I can't say that. Um, Dude, I can't bet against Rocco Well. I know. I'm going to I'm gonna go with Brexville Venadia because I'm trying to get into the Brexville tournament. So I need Coach Haverday to watch this and say, oh, yeah, no problem, man. Come on in. I got pictures being taken, videos being taken. And so I'm going to Venadia versus Welsh. Packets just beat Venadia. Yeah, but you Venadia's don't. Flip, the three don't seed. They're not. They're not going to see each other unless it's on the back side. It's like underwear, man. You got to flip it inside out, get more mileage out of them. I, I like that. That's that's yep. smart on your part. Um, there we go. I got Jay Miller versus Rocco Welsh. Rocco Welsh, your champ. Rocco Apologies to the, to the confusion on the Miller brothers. Next one. Who do you have? McDaniel is he UVA? Did I get that right? McDaniel is correct. No, he's going to Nebraska. Nebraska. How could I mess that up? Yep. It's okay because there is a Hayden Daniels at Virginia from Central Ohio. That's who I Hayden confused it. There, but Camden McDaniel is Taze Valley. He's going to Nebraska. He was runner up. He was runner up last year to Shoemate. Yes, but and he, he beat he, Shoemate the week before, right? In the district. Yeah, it was amazing. It was phenomenal. Both guys wrestled us. I think I don't think it was overtime. It might have been overtime. Both guys wrestled the entire time, and it was absolutely amazing. The whole gym loved it. I loved it. I'll say that, and it was great. And yes, Shoemate does win because he was a three-time state champ, 2020, not dis- notwithstanding. In this case, we have Cohen Grimm taking on Camden McDaniel in the final, if we can even have that. Unfortunately, Lockport Township has Oklahoma State's uh, Braden Thompson, so. Wonder if that's Tolly Thompson. I am gonna go with uh I'm gonna go with Braden Thompson in the finals versus Rune Dang. Lawrence. I'm gonna go with Rune Lawrence as your champion from Fraser, Pennsylvania at one. Fraser PA. I got McDaniel versus Heeg. I need Heeg to get in there as a uh, still. AJ Heeg. AJ Heeg's a stud. As AJ Heeg, I wanna say he decommitted. Oh, four or five. That's going to be a uh, quarter. I think I think AJ he decommitted. Now he's going to. Is he going to Oklahoma State? Oh, that'd be sweet. Well, is, hold on. Braden Thompson going to Oklahoma State. Two guys at the same weight going to the same school. Is, is he is he going to Oklahoma State too? I don't know the answer to that. Hold on. I haven't seen. What, what would commitment. they have him ranked at uh, nationally? They'd have him ranked at ninety five. So let's see. Probably, he, yeah. he is. What's what's the deal with that? What's the well, deal? Why with? do they use the old weights I, for ranking? Uh, Who has the old weights still? I don't know. I couldn't even tell you, dude. I don't Me? know the answer. Where's AJ Heek? He's where do they have him ranked? Oh, they have Heek ranked at 82. Uh, yeah, he's going to Oklahoma State. He flipped his commitment. I think he went to gotcha. Oklahoma, then Oklahoma State. Ooh, so he that. is going to Okie State and also Brayden Thompson's Oklahoma State. Yeah. Like are you okay. serious? And he drinks six at 82. And let me see what they have. I, we we kind of abandoned the national rankings. We Braden did. Thompson, Braden Thompson is number one ranked guy. Oh, he's good. So yeah. I said Braden Thompson over Rune Lawrence is what I said. I'm going to go Braden, Braden Thompson. Thompson. I'm going to go Braden Thompson over Rune Lawrence. I took pick Reed Lawrence to start. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Braden Thompson over Rune Lawrence. That's totally fine. The quick question: Where the cat from Indiana, number one recruit overall? Christian. I, I, his name's Christian. Indiana, right? Um, hold on, I got you. He's the pound for pound number one guy. Yeah, but what? Which one? Carol. Carol. Oh, Carol. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Christian oh, yeah, Carol. Two twenty. Next. Class. No, no. I think Christian Carroll's no. Christian Carroll's two eighty five. Is he? All right, hold on. That Let me see. Jack. In the pound for pound, Christian Carroll. Hold on. Yeah, he's boy they got him as pen. They have him as the number one. Okay. And then they, yeah, he's heavyweight. He's got it, but my phone won't let me scroll down to, to 285. Just it hates, it hates the 285s. Yep. Hog Molly's baby. No, it's not. It's not. He's not. He is 220. That, I'm telling you, I didn't Come think on, was- but they have Ben Cooter's number one. Do they have him at 95? What the heck's going on here? Dude, they have him at he must be doing post. They don't have him as a. He's not in the rankings. Did Hold he on. Leave let, let me see what Willie says here. Let me see what Willie did, says. Did he leave high school to go to a regional training center? 
I'm guessing that's what happened here. That would be the only explanation for him to not be, because I think he's a 285. He's jacked. I know that. He's a jacked mutant. <sighs> Hold on. What is Willie? Doesn't even have him as a weight class. He doesn't even have him as a weight class. He's yes. just there. His last loss is to Feldman. Though. Yeah, who Feldman. is very good. Yeah. So Cooter is the two twenty pounder. He's the two. He's playing football at Iowa and wrestling, I believe. Unbelievable. We'll see how long that goes. Rocco yeah. is the four, the four pound for pound. Oh man! Yeah. So incredible. Yeah, Christian Carroll must not be wrestling this year. I have to find out. Hmm. He's like he John- does not have him. He does not have him listed mm-hmm. at two twenty or heavyweight. And I, I believe oh. he is a heavyweight, but he's also he's done two twenty. I know that. Hey, if yeah. Braden Thompson can get past Camden McDaniel in the semis. He's your winner. The problem is Camden McDaniel and he have to wrestle in the quarters. Dude, yeah. the quarters it's gonna be a bloodbath. Gonna be a bloodbath. Hey, all right, two fifteen. Hey, let's go. Up, how do you clean up the blood from the bloodbath? Blood I don't know. How do you clean it up? Uh, defense swipes. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure I got that right. Yeah, you got that right. Okay, two fifteen. We got Jersey Rob, Max Shula, Dylan Russo, Kyle Snyder, Ohio heavyweight in those first four seats. Yes. Uh, yeah. Snyder and Shulaw was a semifinal last year, won by Shulaw, correct? At the Iron Man, no state Snyder Shulaw. Yes, I think semi did Snyder. Win? Did no, Snyder Sh- win. Shulaw won. Shulaw won. Yeah, hold on. I'll I don't tell you who won. They wrestled last year, they hit here last year. They hit here last year. Hold on, let me let me let yes, me, they, let me, let me, they hit here last Snyder year. Won. Uh, no, that's 285. I don't want 285. Uh, that's not hog mollies. It's not it. Not hog mollies. Uh, 215. 215. They hit. I know they hit. Mm-hmm. Shoot. Shoot. Leaves, Leaves the beat Snyder the in, the, in the quarters last year. Five, right. two. And... Russo lost to Brothers and a pin. Oh, I got to get the consos here. I'm going to look at the consos. Dylan. Last year, placement at the Ironman. Snyder took sixth place. Neves beat him five to two. Neves is at heavyweight this year, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Shula took... Looks like Shula took. Shula got runner up at the state tournament. He took. Seven, he took seventh. Seventh at Ironman. Seventh. It says. That can't no, be. Right. No. He, he lost to Neves for third. I thought. No. Or did he lose the top so quarters? The, the brackets all jacked up. The Rav Sam was third. They're not telling me who. Neves looks like he lost. Snyder. Snyder got sixth last year. And then it looks like. Shula, they have him at fourth, third. Yeah, fourth, fourth. You're right, fourth. He lost the, knee. the brackets all jacked up. Yes, that's all right. But Shula beat Farrell. It looks like he beat Neves. Eleven three. I can't. I can't tell from the bracket. The brackets all jacked up. Gotcha. I have to send hey, you the bracket. Question. It's all weird. So, so those guys were all in here same weight, and then they were the same weight at the state tournament between Snyder, Neves. And uh, Shula, and then That's it right. went Neves, Shula, Snyder, I believe. Yeah, Shula, yes, was, that is Shula right. was fourth. He lost in over a uh, sudden victory. Yeah, at Ironman, correct. It's I I believe it's what it is. Farrell took seventh, McDonald eighth, Shula was fourth. So Shula was the That's highest cool. placer last year at Ironman, and then Neves won the weight. Now Neves is at Blair. Incredible, and let's, let's think pick, about this. Let's pick. Let's just pick. Let's pick here. I, am. I got Go. your answer. It's Dylan Russo versus Max Shulo in the semis. The winner of that is going to get Rob Jersey Rob, and I think it's going to be Shulo. Okay, Shula I'm going. Versus- I'm going with the Kent State commit, Kyle Snyder. Oh yeah, you are. Kyle Snyder versus Max Shulo in a shootout in the. Iron Man finals won by Kyle Shula or uh, Max, Max Shula in overtime. 
Nice. So hold on. Overtime. Hold on. Did the, sale, the, did the sales go deep in the playoffs? Uh, Not deep enough to affect him. Okay. So I'll go with Max Shulaw beats Kyle Snyder in overtime in the Ironman finals. I don't think he knows how to get tired. The dude is a rock, man. He is amazing. Yeah. Let's talk heavyweight here. Let's talk 285. True hog mollies. Yes. I think Carter Neves is out for blood. I think I'll he's take getting... Car- Carter Neves is my guy. I'm taking yep, him to he's win gonna it. He's going to be taking on Parker Farrell in the finals, the Virginia Tech commit. And uh, that's your that's your finals match. And we're going Carter Neves out of much love. He, you know he's going to win with inside tie, collar tie, yeah. head inside. I'm going Carter as... Neves. Carter Neves. Uh, and Carter Neves will take on Aaron Parker Reeves Farrell. of Wadsworth. Parker Farrell. I just, you just know you got that wrong. It's Aaron Reeves of Wadsworth. <laughs> you got that wrong. Uh, give me your team champ. You still going with Stilly? Uh, yep. So, uh, but no Ferrari. No Ferrari. That's okay. I think Mark Anthony is going to lead Blair to another title. I can see that. But they've got to get past my boys at Stillwater. I might wear an orange Mark shirt. Mark Anthony McGowan is going to lead his team. To another Iron Man title. It's in the books. Write it down. And uh that's what's I've gonna happen. It down. That's what's gonna happen. Hey, we wrote started it down. The show. Listen, we started the show with this, and I'm gonna end the show with this. The Walsh Iron Man will never be duplicated, and the culture and history of the tournament is second to none as far as high school wrestling in the United States of America is concerned. Zeb Miller. Iron Man, can't wait to see you, brother. Friday, I'll be there. Okay. That is my extremely biased Ohio Pickums. I I hope everybody considers that. Like I know nobody's gonna make it to the end here to hear this like disclaimer yeah. statement, but I hope they consider that my extremely biased opinion for and love for Ohio wrestling being Ohio cast. Mark Neiman, thank you for the time. I will upload this bad boy tonight. People are gonna see it on the wire. See you at Iron Man on Friday, brother. Sounds great, man. We'll see you then.